If you watch the news, you'd think Americans have never been so polarized. But wait, is that true? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Political polarization is a huge issue in America, much more now than ever before. Everything's become a left or right issue. Excuse me, can I have a veggie burger? Why? Because you're afraid of cows causing climate change, you liberal snowflake? Because I have high cholesterol? Political polarization itself isn't anything new. The U.S. has had tons of it throughout its history. Just be glad that we aren't resolving it with duels anymore. With a society as big and diverse as America, you're bound to see more and more differing values and opinions on things like abortion, guns, gender, or any other hot topic. But it really feels like things are getting worse. More and more people across the political spectrum agree that political debate in the U.S. has become less respectful and fact-based and the political conversations with people they disagree with are stressful and frustrating. Kind of like that awkward uncle at Thanksgiving dinner who always ruins everything. A large part of this is thanks to the media, which has pretty much thrown out nuance for clicks. Because what are you more likely to click on? Eating pork is unhealthy, but only if not eaten in moderation, or bacon is going to kill you and everything you love. Oh, I hope this doesn't give news sites ideas. Mainstream media outlets constantly push simplistic narratives that fit their worldviews and encourage fear-mongering. Oddly enough, blaming the news media for dividing the nation is something that most Americans across the political spectrum can actually get behind. And this may surprise you, but there's a lot more that Americans today agree on than just that. Like, why the weirdest things only seem to happen in Florida? But there's a lot of agreement on foreign policy, too. Most Americans agree terrorists are bad news. That may sound like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised given what some of the loudest voices in America have to say. If you only pay attention to what you see online, you'd believe that America is full of people who would have rooted for Hitler or waved at the terrorists on 9-11 as they flew into the Twin Towers. There have been numerous pro-Palestinian protests and members of the squad that seem to endorse, downplay, and even justify Hamas the terrorist organization that struck Israel on October 7th last year with indiscriminate killing, raping, and hostage-taking. But, according to this recent Harvard-Harris poll, most Americans by and large agree that the attack on Israel was in fact a terrorist attack, and that what Hamas did can't be justified by Palestinian grievances. On top of that, an overwhelming majority of Americans support Israel over Hamas. So this is a case where, despite the impression you get from the media, the far left does not represent the average American. But there are also plenty of places where the far right is just as off base. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. So if progressives like the squad are out of touch with Americans over the Israel-Hamas conflict, many on the right are just as out of touch over the Ukraine-Russia conflict. Now it's one thing to question how much support should go to Ukraine. But some Republicans have made it their job to cast Zelensky as an ungrateful international welfare queen, a leech, and a criminal. They have plenty of awful things to say about Zelensky whenever he asks for aid in defense against Russia. They're even mad at how he dressed at the White House. Hey, I'm just happy when people Biden invites to the White House keep their clothes on. Some, like former Fox News host Tucker Carlson, allege that the real reason for U.S. aid to Ukraine isn't to protect Europe or to stop authoritarian regimes' imperialist ambitions, but to pay back for millions of dollars in bribes allegedly given to Joe and Hunter Biden. I have a suspicion that some Republicans also simply want to do the opposite of whatever Democrats support. It's kind of like a weird reverse form of Trump derangement syndrome, like a Biden derangement syndrome. Although considering how deranged Biden seems half the time, maybe we should just call it Biden syndrome. Tucker Carlson even asked why people don't like Putin. Since the day that Donald Trump became president, Democrats in Washington have told you you have a patriotic duty to hate Vladimir Putin. It's not a suggestion, it's a mandate. Anything less than hatred for Putin is treason. It might be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Is he trying to snuff out Christianity? Does he eat dogs? These are fair questions, and the answer to all of them is no. Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that. Yes, Putin not eating dogs definitely means that there's no reason not to like him. 
And he definitely doesn't threaten to get people fired for disagreeing with him. Why bother when you have poison in open windows and tall buildings? You know, just ignore all the widespread rape and torture and all the persecution of Christians. You know, I bet all of the Ukrainians who died buried under the rubble that used to be their homes, their last words were, at least Putin wasn't woke. But guess what? Like the Israel-Hamas thing, most Americans support Ukraine and view Russia negatively. In fact, 95% of Americans have unfavorable views of Putin. Which makes sense, Americans aren't big fans of authoritarians. But you really gotta wonder about those in the 5%. And speaking of authoritarians, a majority of Americans now have an unfavorable view of China. They are clear on the fact that the Chinese Communist Party should not be trusted. I'd like to think that my other channel, China Uncensored, played a small role in it, but most credit goes to China's obviously bad behavior. Now if only Americans would stop using TikTok. So surprisingly, Americans seem to largely agree on what's considered some of the most controversial foreign policy issues. But guess what? There's even more common ground in domestic issues, beyond daylight saving time and an unhinged love of pumpkin spice. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. Most Americans agree that Islamist terrorism, Russian authoritarianism, and Chinese communism are evil because they're Americans. And they also agree that people are born with inalienable rights. Now, what exactly those rights are and how they should be protected is a very controversial issue, especially when it comes to things like abortion, LGBTQ issues, and LGBTQ abortions. Hey, how'd that fetus get that flag? But regardless of where you stand on those issues, one thing that Americans agree on is parental rights. You'd think that parents having rights over their children would be common sense, but some people, the very same people who are supported by parents' tax dollars, think that they're in a position to exclude parents. The Atlantic asks, is defying parents the only ethical alternative? The Nation asks, how to fight the right's moral panic over parental rights? New York Magazine calls it parental rights extremism. A lot of this is over what say parents have in what schools teach their kids. For example, Muslim and Christian parents sued the Maryland School District for removing religious opt-out to LGBT books in K-12 curriculum. And here's a Black Lives Matter coloring book a fancy New York elementary school gave to kids for Black History Month. It does not actually teach black history, but does teach about disrupting the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. Parents wouldn't have found out about it if it weren't for a snow day that forced their kids to do schoolwork at home. But many schools are making it very difficult for parents to even find out what their kids are being taught. School bureaucrats have sued parents for asking simple questions about the curriculum. A Minnesota public school district tried to charge parents more than $900,000 for records. A Michigan school district tried to charge parents over $400,000 to figure out what they were actually teaching their kids. Gender is also an issue. Many school districts are hiding students' gender identities from parents. And government officials have even gone as far as blocking enforcement of mandatory parental notification policies about gender policy. But this clearly isn't what most Americans want. A vast majority across the political spectrum believe that parents should be able to see all curriculum plans and that parents should be notified about student gender changes. You mean parents want to know what their children are being taught and what they're going through? You know, there's a term for when parents show no interest in their kids' lives whatsoever, neglect. Americans also disagree with the idea that parents aren't entitled to know their kids' identities. Americans are all about allowing parents to be involved in their children's development and demanding both transparency and accountability. But it's not just that. Americans also share a lot of other commonalities that polarized voices would have you ignore, like a deep hatred for anything Kardashian-related. But besides that, some push the idea that Republicans are all about erasing black history, or that Democrats hate the U.S. Constitution. But according to this report by Moore in Common, a nonprofit that researches polarization, Republicans underestimate Democrats' commitment to celebrating American achievements and overall story of progress. Democrats, meanwhile, underestimate Republicans' willingness to recognize failures in American history and the roles of minority groups in making America better. Wow, so people who disagree with you politically aren't automatically anarchists or fascists? 
doesn't sound right. Everyone who disagrees with me must be a Nazi. But when it comes to teaching American history, both parties actually pretty much are on the same page. I'm bringing these things up because people need to be reminded that Americans across the political spectrum are more alike than we are different. And that's not what we're being led to believe. Divide and conquer. There's really a lot of great things about nationalism and patriotism that get sidelined by the media, and especially social media. YouTube hates when I talk about it. So that's why I'm hiding it in gaming content on my new show, Deep Thoughts While Gaming. I have a great message about nationalism and patriotism using the hit new game, Helldivers 2. Check it out and let me know what you think. And America Uncovered couldn't continue without your support. We need supporters of Liberty, so hit that orange button to support the show for as little as a dollar an episode, and you can also set a monthly limit. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.